Sorry, everyone, we crashed the internet. <laughs> and this is a really great example of knowing <laughs> and having so many kids and running a business is that like shit happens, like a lot of shit, a lot of random shit, really unfortunate shit. And so I just want you to think about that, that you're able to like go with the flow, right? That you're gonna get interrupted and just making it a normal part of your business. Keep that in mind, hang on, here comes Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Sorry about that. I'm just telling them that this is a really good example that when you have kids, you're going to get interrupted. Things are going to like chaos is going to ensue. But like having yep. sort of the mindset, which it goes back to what you're just saying, that part of your success is just having a mindset of that you're going to figure it out, that it's going to be okay, and like you'll just jump back right in to whatever sort of craziness happens and making it a normal part of your business. Distractions, 100%. The distractions, I think that's one of the things, and I know we'll get to this in the, the family life thing, you know, as we kind of dive in deeper, but I think people have this weird impression that the only reason that I have any success or I can, you know, get my business going is because my children are so well behaved. My kids are really sweet at school. They're like just the really good kids and you know, they're polite and it's like madness. There's someone who said this something so profound, like your children hold it together all day at school, if they're at school or whatever, but or pre-k or, or daycare, whatever. By the time they get to you, they could just let loose. They do not have to be so guarded of all of their emotions, thoughts, actions. So they just let you have it. And that is exactly what happens all day in my house. My kids are insane, all of them. It is so loud. It is so chaotic and just complete madness but there's part of that where i'm like you know um i welcome it because they're they're my top priority my husband and my children so like that chaos and madness they're gonna be here in you know 50 years my business likely won't or it will have more after you know i'll be retired or whatever but my kids are always going to be around so kind of making that be my focus of welcoming the distractions you know welcoming them while they're still here in my house um, as they get older, that will change. Um, so that's kind of, you know, the approach. Yeah. And I want, I want like my clients and I want sort of my brand, like my children deserve to be here and they're like, they're three, four, five, six, and seven. Like, you know what I mean? Like they're, and then I, and I posted this today, like they are equal to me and to my clients in dignity that I don't need to like act like they shouldn't be here or shouldn't be around. Like, like they're here. <laughs> like yep. I want them to be here. So we have to make do with sort of the season of their own lives. They have to, we have to make do, but we do not have to make compromises to say, and this is something I think we all do. Like, oh, I can't really be as polished and buttoned up with breast milk all over my shoulder. I, I have, I can't even tell you how many uh, zooms I have done while nursing a baby and you can hear it. The, <laughs> you know, like they're sitting there, like, you know, and you'll just see a hand come up like this and grab me and like pull down like that. That is my life. And most of my clients, almost all of my clients are like, cool, you do you. Like, it's not a big deal. But I think we limit ourselves by going, I can't have another baby. When I get pregnant, I get tired. And, you know, my kid's going to distract me from my work. I scaled my business while pregnant and hired a team, like it forced me into some uncomfortable things like the control freak in me didn't want to do. And that now led to me having an agency with still the same girls I scaled it with, minus a couple who went and found real jobs, whatever. It, freelancing was never for them anyway. But I'm able to kind of grow my, it forced me into a whole new world that I didn't really know I wanted. And it's given me even more freedom. So like, you just don't know what's coming down the road. Yes. And this, this is a really great example of the mindset that it takes to have five kids is like, okay, when you have one, you're not sure how you're going to do it. When you have two, you're not sure how you're going to do it. Then you have three and you're not sure how to do it, but you're doing it. And you're like, well, like, you know, like I'm figuring this out as we go and it's not so bad. And then you have four and you're like, I don't know how I could possibly do one more. You are always maxed out at the number of kids you have. And it's like mindset of, okay, I don't know how, but I know that I can figure it out. And so that carries into this business where it's like, okay, 
I don't know how I'm going to do this when I have to nurse the baby and take this phone call, but I'm going to figure it out and it's going to be fine because I've, I've done it before. So this confidence becomes like a muscle essentially. And it just like, you, you, you figure it out because you do it. And, and, and the way that I, I don't mean to like, I love men. I, I get a lot of insights and like, they don't understand this. Like there was one time where I'm taking a call in the, in the back room in the closet and John's got the brand new baby, the baby's freaking out. And all I can hear is the baby cry. And I like turn into this cold sweat. And I said, I paused the call, I got the baby. And I said, I can do the call and take the baby at the same time. And it's not a big deal. And he's like, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> man template approach of how to run a business like it's never we're never really going to fully step into our unique power and ability to do what needs to be done it's so true like stepping into this is who i am right now my children are not removed from i actually think for years i tried to hide that i have five kids because one client screwed me up she actually maybe it was then that i published it on my page i had kind of like I was like, oh, people won't hire me if they think, oh, at the time I had four. People won't really want to work with me if I have four kids. People now are like uh, so shocked by it. I don't want that to be the reason they just want to, like, I don't want that to be the takeaway when they try and, you know, schedule a consult with me. So I didn't really publicize it too very much in the beginning. And then I got on a call with a lady who, when she found out I had four kids, she's like, well, how are you going to do the work for me? And I'm like, we're not a good fit. Like yeah. she basically fired me because I had four kids. I'm like, that's crazy. But then I'm like, you know what? I don't ever want to talk to that kind of person again. So I plastered it everywhere. Like I've got all these kids it's all over my website. Like, you know, all, the, the kids are part of who I am, but it's also, you know, m maybe that's overwhelming for you, but all of my clients who I work with are so chill and so amazing that they ask me about the children by name. Like this has been something that has been a blessing to them as well you know, as it is to us. And they're, you know, I get the work done. That's not a question. Um, they don't know how or why, <laughs> but it gets done. They don't need to know it. And uh, I think it's Eva, Eva Kalvig, or I think something, I can't remember her last name exactly. But she's always posting things like, you've got to show up. Like, don't worry about your makeup. Don't worry about your hair. Don't worry about, you know, like just show up. Don't worry about what you're saying. Say it anyway. And like, stop being scared of putting yourself out there in the same way moms do get scared that, oh, I'm not professional enough, or there's someone more professional out there who knows more. Like, stop it. That's, that's not who wants to work with you. Find people yeah. who want to work with you right where you're at. Yeah. They exist. Yeah. <sighs> good stuff. This is really good. Um, speaking of treating our children with dignity and like treating them as like they're just coming along for the ride is like when I'm working, I try to smile at them. And I feel like this has just been like a really simple, easy shift for me and including them in the process of, okay, guys, mom has a call. Mom has to do this thing for an hour. Like, this is what I need you to do. Giving them really clear, simple directions. And then like, trying to help them enjoy the process by just smiling about it, which makes them happier, which makes me less stressed out when I'm doing the work. And so just the simple act of like smiling in that process can really shift the energy, the frantic energy of, oh my gosh, I can never get this stuff done. And I have all these kids and I like, I can't do this work. <laughs> Like, this is a really good example of like, like just saying, what do you need smiling and say, okay, like mom has to do this thing. I need you to try to do X, Y, Z. Right. So that's also been really helpful for me personally. That's so true. Like I also, it's holding your children to an accountability at a young age that people think, oh, you can, no one can keep their child occupied or quiet for that long or it's impossible. Well, for my children, I tell them, um, hey guys, I'm about to get on a client call and we prep them for about 10 minutes. I have a brand new yeah. client, this is her name, here's her children. Like I get them really yeah. involved and psyched about the actual person yeah. I'm gonna be speaking with. And I tell them and you know, they, at the end of the call, sometimes they'll, you know, they're about done after an hour, but I allow the older children to take responsibility to babysit the youngers. You know, it's a free for all, they can do it however they like to babysit. They get paid for it, like, and that's when they're home in the summer. But when they're not, the kids have to occupy themselves. And it's like, 
you know, you, they get used to it after a while. They're like, oh, it's just that 30 minute or 60 minute block where she's on the phone or on a Zoom call. And most of my people I've spoken to, you know, if we hit 45 minutes, my kids are like, I need you. So whatever. H hang on one second. Let me talk to her real quick. And then I'll let the kid come over and speak to the client too and say hello. And that reminds them, oh, I just need to give her a few more minutes. Like it, it's not something I would be horrified if a client thought that that was so terrible or unprofessional that they didn't want to work with me. Cool. Peace out. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not interested in working with you. Anyway, there are so many amazing people out there. So many awesome people. I literally had one interaction with someone who did not support the, or the idea that I had all these children because it wasn't, she didn't care about the kids. So yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Good stuff. Okay. Um, Oh, this is, this is also, this is, okay. So moving on just a little bit is uh, making sure that when you're communicating with people that you're really, really clear about what you do. And so, and, and your pricing, right? And being firm and fair. And so I want to share this example of this client of mine who had this offer on the table with somebody that stretched out like 10 days because she couldn't get her shit together long enough to put a coherent offer with a coherent price. So she spent all week chasing around, following up, emailing, Facebook messaging, text messaging. Like it was a nightmare. And I and, and, and so we did this whole coaching thing where I was like, you don't have time as a mom of two kids to be chasing around this client. You need to get your shit together in a way where you can communicate exactly what you do, exactly how you're going to help them, exactly what you need to make a decision by, and exactly this price. And it is totally fine that some conversations are going to be collaborative and you want them to be a part of the process. But like this shit where it's like stretched out for days on end does not serve you and, and you're losing money, like you're bleeding money. You're bleeding um, a lack of confidence. When yeah. you can't confidently say, this is what I provide and here's how and why I provide it to you and the cost and the benefit, people are like, mm, take it or leave it. It's not really something I'm, you know, that excited about because you're not excited about it. If you do not write this down and have your standard proposal, you can deviate from your proposal. You can do a la carte, whatever you want, but you have to have a starting point. Um, one thing I did want to share, this is one of the biggest things that helped me scale from an, a, a by the hour, like you buy hours each month for my VA services. I know there are a ton of virtual assistants out there or people like that who offer like, Oh, well, you know, I made $40 an hour at the top. So I'll charge 40 an hour for my whatever you're providing. Like you don't have a good um, way of figuring it out. For moms, this is the way that you can still dominate. Be the expert you want to be. Provide the stellar service you want to provide. You figure out, you know, in a week how many hours you want to work. Then figure out how much you want to make. Build out some packages that fit into those blocks. Fill up the week, but only the hours that you can commit to working. Figure out how much you want to make and build that back in. Um, that might not sound, tell me if that sounds clear. I hope it does. But like, that's what I did. I had a big board and I said, here's the hours I want to work. And I'm, I'm crazy. So I'm like eight to five, eight to five. Um, I have since changed that. But uh, I said I wanted to make, you know, 75,000 a year. So I built my blocks and I had a big whiteboard with, empty blocks and filled blocks and as i got new clients i wrote their name in the block and i filled it and up this is only possible if you have that level of clarity like you cannot you cannot move forward in power if you don't know what you want and where you're going and how you're going to do it yep. if you are not here about that stuff like you're you're going to piss away the whole week six hundred dollars a month was good for me i had no yeah. like I wasn't looking to move up from that. So I was happy at 600. But then when I wasn't, I was like, well, how much do I want to make? What is realistic? And then I got, you know, to 75. And then I said, next year, I'm going to get over 100. And I got over 100. And then I burned it all down and started over from scratch. But whatever. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> <Not my deal. laughs> I had the freedom to do you that, know, though. You know how to make $600. You can do it again. And you can do it again. And you can do it again. 
Yep. And all that, that whole year I practiced my pitch and I practiced talking to people, talking to people and telling them no, having people tell me no. But like I knew when I talked to them on the phone, I just, I literally would turn around. I'd look at my big whiteboard and I'd be like, huh, where am I going to put them? And as they're talking to me, I'm like, they'd go in the lap, lowest package. Nope. They just said something that moves them up to that one. And then if they said something crazy, put them in the top one. Um, yeah. And then I just pitch it like that, like figure out where they fit. But I knew exactly what services I provided and, you know, had it all outlined. And I have three different proposals that I would send based on the conversation. And how does this go? It goes, hi, I'm Lisa. That's how it goes. This is how it goes. It's how it goes. I am Lisa. (laughs) The internet does not take that away. Okay, the internet only only affirms what is already is true. And it's that, hi, I'm Lisa. People have to know who you are. Yep. It doesn't change how people interact. It's exactly the same. People but have that's to know why, you. That's why most of my clients came from that very first group where I wanted, I wanted to grow my business. And I found a bunch of people who also wanted to grow theirs were in the group. And I found that I liked providing things they hated doing. And I'm like, well, hot dog, let's get together. And it just, it just happened so, you know, organically. But I will tell you, my husband always laughs. Whenever I get a little bit of a, like, you know, fear of scarcity and I don't have any money or I don't have a prospect coming in, I will panic. And I'll be like, I don't know where my next client's going to come from, blah, blah, blah. My husband is so sick of it. He's like, every time you say that, you get one. Like, I don't know why. But it's not that I just sit there going, I don't know where they're going to come from. All of a sudden, I go into like, crazy mode of you know communicating with people talking to people like I cast the widest net to bring in the right client and it it, it's not um it's not that I just sit there and go huh I wish someone would land on my website like I just nonstop hustle like I said I work eight or nine to five that's what I do yeah every conversation will either turn into a client or be a connector to your client so it's not like you're like pouring out your appointment book and be like, oh, I'll take whatever job I can get. Like, really, like the conversations are meant to, to move past your network. Yes. Because every person that you meet has access to hundreds and thousands of people that you don't, and that's where the opportunities are. And they provide different services. Some of my best connections are other people who do websites and digital marketing because we all have niched down. So like, it's a total collaboration and I get to sit and talk to them. We'll have like coffee chats where we're talking. I'm like, they'll suggest books to me. I'll suggest podcasts to them. Like we, it's just a really nice kind of a, especially when you're on a solo Island as a either a freelancer or a small business owner, or whatever entrepreneur, you've got to have community around you. Um, Absolutely. I, I did want to talk. I not have been able like, so I like the old, the, when people ask, how do I do it? It's because I have a handful of people in my corner who are like d- emotional support people. Yeah. So that, yeah. Having the, that community support. Yeah. Whoever that may be, they've got to be there. Yeah. Um, what one else? other thing for what the else? guiding, go ahead. For, gonna say? for the guiding principles, um, one thing that I think is a real uh, blocker for people is either perfectionism or the Pinterest mom thing. So one thing that I think is the reason why you and I specifically can have five kids, have businesses, and just be so happy in our lives and what we have currently, even if it may not be perfect, is because we're not aspiring to that kind of weird new modern perfectionism as exemplified on Pinterest. Like, you know, you could walk into my house and it could be a total disaster. You know, the sink can be piled up and the kids could have built a fort out of poster boards. Like, whatever. When I get home, I'm sure that's what they're doing. It's always insane. But I don't have this kind of um, perfectionism either that I have to be spending every moment with my children. That I'm a stay-at-home mom. I always wanted to be one. I always wanted to, you know, if we were ever really independently wealthy, I probably wouldn't work. I don't know if I would work. I might still. I love it. But, like, I don't think that every moment that I'm with my kids, I need to sit on the floor and play blocks with them. 
It's never going to happen. I'm not here to be their best friend. I'm here to guide them. So like the fact that I'm pursuing my passions as their mom is so like a role model thing that I want them to, but I still said like, here are my non-negotiables. I have a few non-negotiables. You know, we're going to go to church as a family on Sunday. We're going to eat dinner as a family at night. Um, my children will be kind of respectful. You know, we're going to be on time to things. Like I have a few just like overall principle non-negotiables and the rest is really a toss up. Like it's totally fine that, you know, we went out in public and the girls insisted on wearing their own clothes, dressing themselves and doing their hair. Like, I don't care. You want to wear a costume out in public? I don't care. It's not important. But there are times when I will literally work for hours and we have something we have to do. And I say, okay, team, let's go. I don't spend time doing their hair, finding the perfect gift. I let my kids find a gift. I let them pick out the gift bag for like birthday parties. For um, Yes, my kids, they clean up the house. They clean up their rooms. They do the dishes. They do the laundry. This is not like because I have a business, I still have to give my children this like kid's life where they're, it's so like easy and they get to play all day. No, life is responsibility and life is hard. You guys contribute to the family so that we can contribute to you. Yeah, absolutely. Mary Ellen is saying that she feels a little guilty about working when her kids are around. What's your thoughts on that? Because I have no problem. I'll put my, I know you have to have to work. I'll put my computer in the kitchen and like yeah. do that in between like the downtime and stuff. I want them to see me work. I don't yes. care. <laughs> All of my, exactly. All of my workspaces are in the house. So I have one at the kitchen table, a spot I always sit in. Yep. I have one in the living room. It's a little desk. And then I have an easy chair in my bedroom where like, so I have spots everywhere where I need to go that like are my designated areas. Yeah, my they, children, they, yeah. That's the same thing, yeah. I've got like spots, random spots throughout the whole house. Yeah, it's near a plug-in outlet. And, yeah. you know, I, yeah, no, totally. And I can put my coffee or my tea, you know, wherever I need to next to me. Yeah, like, but my kids are always there. We have a small house. It's a nice size house, but it's not like big or whatever. We have 10 acres they can play on, but my kids always just go right here. <laughs> I've got a baby crawling over me, you know, while I'm doing things. One of my, um, one of my things, one of my like soapboxes, the, you know, the hill I'll die on as we call it, is technology. I despise technology and what it's doing to youth. So I am really passionate about not having video games in our house and not having, um, my kids don't have um, like computer, like Fortnite, things like that. And my kids don't have tablets and they will not ever have a smartphone. Not provided by me anyway. So as they get older, I don't want that kind of hypocrisy to transfer to them. If my children come to speak to me, I shut it down. Computer either gets turned where I can't see it and my eyes are on them. Yes. Phone gets put down, face down, wherever, pushed away. And yeah. Like I, the eye thing more. Yeah. So, so I will pay, to, or I will tell them, I'm just about to finish something. You need to wait about 10 minutes and then all, all eyes are on you. And when you have five children, that's going to be split throughout the day. And so, like, you know, at the end of the day, when I shut down my computer at five o'clock, it's all kids, all husband, all the time. But mm -hmm. during the day, to tell my children, hey, you do not get immediate gratification. I've got to finish this. And as soon as I'm done, I'll take care of you. That is totally fine. And to sit there and be, like, ignoring your children. This is where I go mentally when I think about that. Think about moms, let's say, 100 years ago. Moms did not have the luxury of sitting in their home and playing with their children. They all had to have a garden that they tilled. If they didn't till the garden and they didn't can the vegetables and the fruits, they had no food for winter. I used to grind my own wheat. Like, that was intense. I was very frugal. To, like I said, my husband was, is a teacher. Like, we don't make a lot of money. So the way I did it was I did uh, frugal things like grinding my own really good quality, you know, wheat berries and then making my own bread. Um, which I then sold at the farmer's market. Oh, so fun. So <laughs> <laughs> My... <laughs> it was so fun. It was so fun. It was, like... <laughs> it was like science experiments in the kitchen. It was so, so fun. I'm um... like, no, you nobody. 
So it was such good friend too. Going, yeah. all, all okay, go ahead. Keep going. So, so if you think about a hundred years ago, these moms did not have the, they were out there in the garden. They were out there taking care of the animals, the property. They did not sit and pay attention to their children all day long. But, uh, you know, one thing that was lacking then was maybe like interpersonal connection and love <laughs> in some families. So the, the way to do it is to, you know, do your work, let your children be able to respect your time that you're working. And it's wonderful that you're available to them, but you do not need to be gratifying their every whim and desire. But like, so one strategy I have is, you know, you have to wait a few minutes. Um, and then the other strategy is uh, either, you know, putting the phone down and having it all away while you're talking to them. They feel like they got that one-on-one. -on -one but also starting them on activities when they're really little. Hey, mom, you want to play dinosaurs? Sure, we go over, we play dinosaurs. I'm there two, three minutes, and then I'm gone. And she's, like, in her world, or he's, like, totally dove, dove deep into Legos and whatever it may be. But, like, for kids, starting them off with that, like, excited, let's do it, it takes me two minutes of my time to invest. I can dip, and they're still going. Yeah, I think there's, there is that mentality that if I'm not, like, playing with my kids, if I'm not, like, watching them every single second, then, like, I'm somehow, like, a bad mom. Come Which over and watch me. Able to identify kids. Has yes, clear visions. Like, what kind of mom do you want to be? Yeah. I don't want to be a Pinterest mom. I don't. I don't. I don't want to be that. I don't want to play incessantly with my kids. Like, you know, like, it's so not really, happening. What definition of motherhood are you listening to? Yeah. Or or who are you using as your role models of who you want to be? Because it's all a facade. Yeah. There's. No one, except for maybe this, the few moms who, like, love to play with their toddlers and they were also, you know, like, that was what they were trained for. Like, that, it's just not realistic. You have to have your own time. And if you, if you give in to, like, the mom guilt or feeling bad about it, it makes you re feel really bad about your work, distracts you from your work, and resentment can creep in. Like, that is not how I'm trying to do this business thing. Like, I'm excited to teach my children what it is I do, teach my sons that, you know, women and men can be resourceful because my husband's on this team too. Um, yeah. You know, he's, you know, he helps me to make sure that I can succeed in my business. And, uh, and my children are a part of my success as well. Yeah, I, I tell them, I'm like, cheer me on. You want a new minivan? Like, <laughs> yes. I need you to cheer for me. Yes. Yeah, we bought a camper. And I'm like, who's <laughs> taking you camping? Like, me and daddy are because we work. You are welcome. You know? Yeah, I need their support. You know? Like, I, I need their support just as much as they need mine. Okay, this is such a good conversation. I want to move on to house hacks. Is there anything about business that you want to re really just kind of uh, drill the point home? Um, I mean, you know, just like a few or, or a few kind of.